<laughs> Welcome everybody to Craft Board Gaming for the APA. Um, are you sick of the pandemic? Have you watched everything on Hulu and Netflix? Have you gone through all of your crappy puzzles? Do you wish you'd spent some more time developing some indoor hobbies, even though it's Colorado? Well, we've got the session for you. We're gonna try to aim for 30 minutes, but we're gonna talk about craft board games that you should be playing. And unless you've been under a rock or maybe quarantined in a house for six months, you may have missed that there's a complete um, revolution in board games. So this is not the your mother's, your father's game of risk or game of monopoly. There's a whole revolution in board games. And so we're gonna show you I, um, how this, the, uh, the hobby has changed and how city planning plays into it. And now there may be some tie-ins to engagement and some projects and actual city planning stuff, but this is really directed for members and families and friends and some things and a hobby that you really should have been doing five years ago that you can start now and how other people are experiencing city planning through board games, which has made a huge leaps and strides. So we are here at my friend's house. His name's Jason, but we call him Smiley. I have to warn you, he gets very excited about this. He is very, very excited about uh, board games. He's our gaming sommelier. He knows everything about games. He teaches the rules. You tell him you're interested in 16th century Italian painting, he will find a board game for you. So we are here at Jason's house. He's gonna be our host. We're gonna tag team um, explaining 10 games, 10 or so games, and then we'll be open for questions at the end. And we're gonna record this in case you have friends that didn't make it. So I do have to warn you, he gets very into it. He's like that one person at the planning, the city planning public meeting that you, that you love and hate. He's very excited. He's a planning groupie as well. So he should be able to kind of speak our language and tell us why some of these games are um, really good for city planners. So we're gonna go in. Hello? Hey, hey, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Everybody, this is J Jason, we call him Smiley. Yes, yeah, so I'm Smiley, I'm the gaming sommelier. It's a little weird to like be looking at, <laughs> like sort of that I'm looking at his phone rather than looking at you, but I guess that's how it works. Um, anyway, so we are- um, There we go. Oh, there we go. Let's try oh, this way. Yeah, it's it's a little, yeah, it's a little bit better. At least like I'm kind of looking at you through the camera. So <laughs> anyway, um, welcome to my humble abode. We'll like, like walk in just to, at least a little bit here. Um, so I'm a, you know, when, really the thing is, is that when you want to choose what board game to play, what you need is, is you need a board game sommelier. And so this is, that's my job. Um, I work for, um, we have a, a little, a little gaming convention, the Pike Speed Gamers, just got to throw a little plug into them. Um, we run a convention in Manitou Springs and we do that um, every year. Unfortunately, we're canceled this year due to COVID, but we hope to be back strong next year or whenever like things open up. So I anyway, throw that in there. Um, really, uh, it's interesting for the uninitiated, um, board games in, um, that most people experience growing up in America, um, you know, it's kind of just risk or monopoly and it's kind of this long drawn out kind of thing. And it, it ends up that, you know, there's just angry people at the end and you're cr crushing your opposition and, you know, people are, you know, have to sit out for like hours and there's tables being flipped and, um, the Germans have a very different outlook on board games. And so their thought is that, um, that board games are really are a family affair. And so a couple of the different things that they think that are important then in a board game is that you wanna make sure that everybody can play until the end. You wanna play something that's fairly short so you can have all the members of the family that um, can be engaged, right? So you can't have like a three hour long kind of thing for you know like a six or eight year old kid. Um, you still want something that has some strategy that's gonna make it interesting. So the decisions have to be interesting for adults as well as children. Um, and then um, on top of all of that, usually it's not um, entirely skill-based. So skill and strategy kind of play, comes into play, but then there's some luck, which then gives everybody the opportunity and a chance to, to win. So kind of that magic combination um, is what the Germans use in order to model their board games. Um, and, they, and so, you know, back in probably in the 90s, there was, um, you know, Settlers of Catan, which now is just known as Catan, like that, um, there was this, sort of this like resource trading game, um, kind of really gained a whole bunch of buzz, um, and it's now gone on to sell millions of copies. That's where the Germans sort of originated with it. Um, due, of course, the internet, things kind of spread across, um, you know, from Germany and the U.S., and so now, um, actually, although it's somewhat niche, like it continues to become more and more mainstream. And in fact, 
Um, so the, the board games it named after, um, you know, since they originated in Germany and Europe, right, they're sort of referred to as Euro style board games. And that's what Wade and I are going to show you today um, is a variety of different games. And then the thing is, is that there are literally, and it may boggle the mind for, for some of you out there, that there are tens of thousands of different board games actually that are out there. And so many of them have been produced even just in the last like five or 10 years, right? So we're living kind of in the golden age of, of board games, whether or not, um, you know, whether or not you're in fact aware of what's kind of happening. Um, you know, you can find some of the games now even that we sort of refer to as like these new style, your style board games. There's some of this stuff that you kind of look at Target and are like, what the heck is this, right? And um, so it's gotten to the place where, um, you know, even if the place is mainstream as Target is sort of selling games like that. Um, so anyway, this, this of course is, is my hobby and my passion. Um, and in fact, how Wade and I um, met uh, many years ago. And so um, I've known him for 15 years. He's never laid out a nice staff report like this about Eurogaming. <laughs> like, I'm glad we're recording this. <laughs> exactly. So um, we are, I'm excited to show you a bunch of different board games. They're all somehow like tie into city and city planning. So Wade said that um, I guess that your convention that you've got going on right now is related to that. So we're going to try to take um, what you all do um, professionally and kind of wet it with then my passion as a hobby. And, um, just see what kind of neat things are um, that we can kind of come out of that and provide some cool recommendations that I think are some games that are a lot of fun um, that you can do. One of the, I think, um, one of the greatest things about um, board games is that uh, they allow people to, um, you know, there's a way in which people are able to interact so it brings people together so that they can, um, they can do something It kind of gets us away from our screens. Um, and I in particular really enjoy the tactile nature of games where you're actually dealing in interactable pieces and because you're the one that kind of has to enforce the rules, um, it also, it's a, it really is a great job of um, tickling the mind. And so it's just a great way to get together, have some fun together, um, and uh, we're just, we'll go and we're going to have a tour of different city planning board games. So the, um, I will uh, All right, we'll take us over here. Take us away. And we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up from in terms of complexity for board games. Yeah, so there's a variety of different different games that are that are that are that are um, they're complicated. This so what they sometimes refer to these are called um, is are called gateway games. So these are games that you might introduce to people that are somewhat new to the hobby or new to this type of game. So this is called Carcassonne, which is um, it's a town in France um, is what the game is modeled after. This is a, I, I sort of set this up. This is a, a game, you know, between three players. That's, it kind of simulates a little bit of what it would be like in play. Um, it's the city planning theme that is associated with it here is, is that these, these dark areas in here, these are, all, um, these are cities and they will score um, based upon the size of the city. These shields will give you extra points. Um, on your turn, this is a really simple game. On your turn, you're gonna have a tile. You'll draw another one. You'll choose from between those two tiles and you'll add it to the board. Um, the only requirement that you have is, is that the roads have to continue, the cities have to continue, and if it's just grass, it's grass to grass. So they, all of these tiles have been placed legally. Um, it's set in like 16th century French, so there's also these cloisters here, which have these little, um, they're, they're these places. These score points based upon the areas that, that they're around it. So it's super simple. Like I've explained most of the, most of the rules. Um, the only other thing is, is that you can lay somebody down in like a field and they'll score for all the cities that are adjacent to that field. Uh, it's, this, this plays like in, you know, 30, 45 minutes, there's a ton of um, expansions. And so one of the things that I really like about it is that the, the basic game is actually is very simple and easy to access. But what's cool is, is that there's a million and one um, expansions that add to it. And so you get like different types of buildings and different, um, different, different pieces. And so it can really make it so that it actually is much more complicated and involved. And what's nice is, is that over time, if you, you've learned it, you get a couple of expansions, now you've got this really rich board game that you're playing, even though you kind of started with something that overall is a pretty basic introduction to the whole genre. This is easily um, available like kind of in any sort of game store um, on Amazon. It's like 20, super, super available. 20, 30 bucks? 20, 30 bucks, right, online. <clears throat> like it's nothing, not very, um, very expensive. Um, if you get into it, um, there are there are like some big box variants that include a whole bunch of the expansions. So if you kind of like, oh, I want kind of a bunch of the variety, that actually is a nice way to get some good value um, out of that. And so this game's actually been around for a long time, and this is like it's like the bread and butter of like original style board games. So, yes. Next one. Sure. All right. So now we'll let Wade 
Wade will be here. I'm gonna okay. swing around. So I'm gonna start with something that I'm gonna recommend to Sheila and Michelle that we buy like APA copies. This game's called Sprawlopolis and it's relatively new. It's like 10 or 12 bucks or 12 or 15 bucks. You literally put it in your pocket. And this is another innovation in board game is that you have know, all these competitive games. Carcassonne is kind of a competitive game. Uh, there's a whole new genre of cooperative games. So you actually sit down and kind of play together. So for kids are great, for adults are great. You want to get together, um, share, share time with people and kind of build community, but you don't want to be competitive and flip tables and, and throw things at each other. Um, there's some of these cooperative games and we're going to show you a couple. This game is literally like a deck of cards. The cards have different zones, industrial, commercial, parks, and roads. And the whole group just starts playing cards down. Each person goes around and plays. They have to play over some other areas. They try to create different zones. And then the brilliant design in this game is that every card has like a, um, a, a point condition. So the group plays to see if they can get the most more points than they did last time. So this one's Sprawlopolis and Bloom. It's about parks. So every game you play is different and there's tons of variation just with this, in this teeny deck. And this game is like all of, you know, 20, 25 minutes. So if you don't like it, you move on with your day. And if you like it, you play it a couple more times. But this is a relatively recent find and I want to get this at the next planning conference that we're all allowed to have and see each other and just put it at the table and just start playing games with people. So this is one of the rare ones that you all actually play together kind of against the game. That's Sprawlopolis. Um, where were we going to go next, Wade? Were we... Um, Ramping up Queen Domino? Queen Domino, okay. Yeah. And if you wanted to go ahead and, and talk about that one, um, you want to talk from there? You want to... Sure, yeah, I'll okay. start here. All right. So Queen Domino, this is one you can generally find like Target. You can find it at almost uh, most stores. Again, this one's like $25, $30. If you can match things, you can play this game. Um, and Domino refers to literally dominoes. If you play dominoes with your family, you, you grab tiles, you lay them out, you connect them to the similar types, and then you multiply them by these crowns. So this is a great one for kids, but it's actually really fun for adults. Um, and then you actually get buildings. Buildings have to go on orange spaces. You get these cute little castles and these cute little pieces. Um, this one is like 20 minutes. Everybody takes a tile, places a tile, matchy matchy. It's good for architectural compatibility teaching. Um, and so you go through and there's a little queen and people compete for her. She gives you extra points. Again, this one is like maybe 30, 45 minutes. Has a little bit more depth than Carcassonne. Um, and my nine-year-old loves this game. And then we play it at board game um, when we meet up with adults because it's so much fun. So this one again, really fast really highly recommend this one is like an intro game if you have somebody who's like I don't like games or too complicated or too many rules but like literally can you you know have you played dominoes before have you matched colors that's all you have to do is match colors and then um, one thing we didn't talk about is most of these games like and, um, Smiley was alluding to um, they're not a player elimination like risk um, they're the victory point games so almost all these games basically get to the end you tally up the highest score and that's the person that wins so even if you're not as good as like somebody else is like a you know, an engineer and they always win the kind of mathy games. You can kind of like be playing against your score each time. So a lot of these games, I think one of the revolutions in board games are like victory point conditions. So you just kind of have different ways to get points. So that's Queen Domino. It's widely available and super popular. All right. Quadrop where Quadropolis? Quadropolis. Yep. Okay. And here I'm gonna mm -hmm. hand that over to you. Um this one, this one might be a little bit trickier to find. So um What's interesting about um, all of these is, is that, so um, listed <coughs> down below, right, is, is the publisher here is called Days of Wonder. Days of Wonder is actually as known for making really pretty um, board games. This is probably a little bit more expensive and, and, and it kind of, it's a sense of that you get what you pay for because it just ends up that you get some slightly nicer pieces, um, you know, so that the tiles are a little thicker, you know, you got these cool like um, glass kind of, uh, um, you know, uh, flat, you know translucent pieces here. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab out the because they're they're just they're cool looking, right? I mean it's so, so much of the game is like it's just it's about it's about having some good pieces to play with. <laughs> so anyway, um what's going on in, in this one, so you're you're building the city, you're trying to build the best city. Um what's interesting here is is that um this this introduces a bit of like kind of a drafting mechanic. So you have um your architects and they're um, placed on the outside of this common board. And then what happens is, is that um, you will go and, and based upon the number that's here, um, you'll select the piece. So if I play down this number two, it's the second piece in this row. I'm gonna take this one and put it here. And then I'm gonna place it on my board. 
And what's interesting about this is, is that I have to put it in either the two row or the two's column. So it's a little thinky because you got to be like, well, I want this tile, but I've got to place it here. What number do I use in order to get it? Like if I wanted to put in the three row, I'm going to put it on, against the three. Um, you know, I need to use my three architect, not my two architect. Um, and then when you place it in each of the different buildings, it's a different sort of type. So you have parks, you have harbors. There's some government buildings that are in here. Um, some, some housing, and you can build like kind of office stacks, some shop, shops, right? And all those different buildings based upon where they're placed, they end up that they give you then um, different, different amounts of points. The other thing that you're kind of managing in this, and, and it's just, and really, I wouldn't get into it except the pieces are so cool. <laughs> um, so what you've got is, is that um, certain buildings, they will give you population, and it's just these like super cool, like translucent guys. And I guess that um, if you look, um, they're the same, so if I come over my Carcassonne game, like you can see that that's the same sort of shape. So this this little person is referred to as a meeple, okay? Um, and and so um, Carcassonne has these original meeples. These are cool, like translucent meeples. These meeples represent your population. So as you get them, like certain buildings will draw population to your city, and so you'll acquire them. And then what you need to do by the end of the game is, is you need to find places for those for that population to um, to work and be employed. If you end up you have a bunch of people that don't have um, don't have places to work, then it ends up that um, you're going to be penalized at the end of the game. And the same thing, you have um, resources, and the resources either power, um, you know, power your buildings if you're generating excess excess energy that's wasteful. And so again, there's sort of a penalty. So it's kind of this cool balance that's going on there. And what's really, um, and again, what makes it, you know, um, what drives kind of the competition, and what's what drives most of the competition in many of the games we're talking about. Is that it isn't so much that there's really a direct kind of kind of competition like you know this is the red players board this is the yellow players board they're entirely separate but you're competing for the same set of tiles so the competition is a little bit somewhat indirect that way um, and so nobody can fully ruin your plan of like they're not going to be able to place like a building for example here that you can't use um, and so that's kind of that's a neat aspect of this one um, I don't know, I'm not as familiar with the, the um, availability of this one, because this one's a little bit of an older Days of Wonder title, but um, still really fun. Days of Wonder makes up a number of actually good games. Like, so I also recommend that just those often, I mean, for people that really are into aesthetics, they'll be drawn to these kind of games again. Um, and they kind of have this sort of this middle level type of complexity that we're sort of dealing with. Um, are we gonna move I'll, on to- I'll, I'll do Big city. So you want to do big city? Just, you want, you, you were gonna let me do big city first, but but I know that your love of this game is 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 really uh, strong here. So go ahead, Wayne. All right. So this is big city. This is one of my favorite games. This has been one of my favorite games for a long time. Um, by far, this is probably the most expensive game here, but this is like easily the most visually stunning game once it's built out. And out of all the games here, if you were to you know want a game that you could put at like a outreach event just to have people sit down and think about city planning and just play through as approachable but actually taught some people a little bit about planning i think this is the game it's really visually appealing they re-released it. it's 20 year edition so you can see it's been out for a while it was actually designed by a supreme court justice in germany so as smiley said the germans really take their board game seriously designed by the supreme court um judge and this one has the nicest pieces by far but actually has even though it might look a little complicated, it's actually really simple. You have cards that have lots on them. So you have lot 17, 18, 19. The more lots that you can assemble and the bigger building you can build, the more points you get. Um, you can add a streetcar and you connect. You have connectivity and you get more points. There's parks that give you additional points. Um, there's civic buildings um, that give you more points. And if you have um, commercial buildings closer to the core, that helps you and residential buildings give you points when they're farther out. So I know it's not totally mixed use that we do now, but at least starts teaching people kind of like why cities were built the way they were built. And then, and just like a really mean thing, like you can drop factories down and everybody's properties next to factories lose points. So this one has a little bit of, of mean spiritedness, but it's not too bad I think there's only two factories. Um, but this one, by far, when this one's out on the table, people just stop and they gawk at it. And it's actually really, really simple. You just have a card. All you can play is the cards that you have in your hand. And so you can play it and just learn it in two seconds. And if you play it more, you start to learn that there's some timing issues of when you play buildings and when you, when you wait for other people to do things and assembling bigger lots. So this game is one of the favorite games. It's probably, this one is probably like $80 to $100. Most of, oh, none of the other games are even close to that. 
But this one is worth it. This is one of the few games I would have like at a planning event, just have people sit down and just start building cities and just get them to think about how cities are constructed. So it actually emulates cities really well. And it's just really fun. I can't think of anybody who city planning friends or not who've played this who really haven't enjoyed it. It's it's just a blast and it's been re-released. And so I think it's pretty available most places. Yeah, there's, I mean, you can see why it's so expensive. Like it's actually architects in the group and planners who've had to do kind of things in grad school and studios. You'll actually build like almost a scale. It's almost like doing a scale model. There's parks and there's different types of residences. And I think it's a Canadian firm. So their city hall is emulated off of something in Toronto. So there's no, uh, kind of Simpson style historic <laughs> building one like we have in the United States. But this is by far one of my favorite games and one of the most uh, accessible games. All right. Um, we're moving on to... Coconut Parks? Yes. Okay. So if you've, okay. For, the, for the DIY family member. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so this, this one, um, this, this also should be pretty readily available. I'm probably looking at online or like a board gaming specialty store because um, Renegade is a, is a, is a common studio. So um, we went to, um, there's a big board game convention that happens um, annually in Dallas, of course, canceled this year due to COVID like many other things, but they, um, they were, we were demoed this game um, when, when we were there. And, and so what's really cool about it is that um, Everybody is given um, a sheet of paper, right? And it has um, all of these different different buildings that are on it. And each turn you roll the dice and it's just, there's a single, there's a single dice. So yes, you can now say single dice. Um, and so it will tell you what type of cut you need to make and how long that cut needs to be. So this is saying that I need to make a cut of length two and another cut of length two. So two cuts of length two. So I would go on my, on my sheet and I would end up that I would actually cut into my sheet and I would cut a length of two into the sheet. Um, eventually, right, with the right set of cuts, it'll end up that pieces then fall off. What you're trying to do, and you're like, what am I doing by chopping up the, all these, all these <laughs> different, different elements? Is that you're trying to match these cards. So you have these cards in front of you, and this is saying, oh, what I want to do is, is that I want to park here. And in fact, this little bridge indicates this park has to be connected. It has to be the same um, piece of paper that has a park on one end and then whatever you want on this other end. Here there has to be, you know, um, a water feature, and this has to be, I think, um, like a sporting kind of area. Um, so each of those has to be there. And then um, as you complete them, you'll get a little bonus, which makes it so that it's easier in order to, um, to accomplish your other ones. They, um, some of the cards, um, most, most of the cards are, are um, easy to do and you can kind of play with like a simpler level. And then um, there's some of the cards, and in fact, I think that might've been one of the, like, so there, there are two different backs, right? And so these cards with, the, um, with these darker backs, these are um, like kind of the more advanced version, and it just means that they're just a little harder to, um, to put together. I actually would say that this game, we may have even dropped back a little bit in, in complexity level as far as this one's concerned. Again, my kids have played it, they've really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, it's just as simple as, oh, I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just making cuts into the piece of paper. So kind of, if you're really trying to channel like your inner kindergartner, I mean, this, is, <laughs> this is really gonna do it for you. Um, but again, and this plays super fast, right? Because you usually, it's just five cards you're trying to make, you're chopping up just a single piece of paper. Um, so you're looking at, you know, 15, maybe 30 minutes at most. Um, but again, a really fun way of kind of assembling, like, like assembling your own little city. Uh, Wade, do you want to talk a little bit about- Yeah, um, my city. My city, because that's just, uh, as a, as a little thing, my city is, um, as Wade kind of goes into it, this is this is probably the latest innovation in in kind of the types of board games. And so he's going to share with you as to what that really is here. Yeah, so city planning games are both late to the show and this new innovation, they're called legacy games. So think about it if you were like writing a book or going to a movie with other people and like crafting the narrative as you were all there together. And so legacy games are this new innovation that have really kind of pegged all the number one games or legacy games. And so the, the premise of a legacy game is that you're all playing the same game 
Um, you're kind of sharing different bits. It's usually competitive within the game, but the game actually evolves. And so after the first game, there's a reveal, something happens. You start to add stickers to your board. Like you rip up cards, you throw cards away. Um, and I always thought it'd be perfect for a city planning game. So you could kind of evolve a city through time and you, it's just really tactile, it's fun. Uh, we've played some other games. Um, Pandemic, I know it's a bad title right now, um, but it's the number one pop, most popular board game is this legacy game where you play, you know, basically the same group of friends has to commit. So it's a little bit of a, it's almost more of a commitment than like a marriage or something. <laughs> You've got to have the same people meet together and play generally like 10 or 15 games of the same game. But if there's nothing I've done that's more engaging than this. It evolves, there's a story, and you can actually craft the story. And so if you meet another group of people who've played um, they've actually maybe had a different outcome. So it's almost like a choose your own adventure, board game, movie, book that you put together with your friends. So talk about like building community. So my, my city is the first attempt in city planning by this. Um, and I'm about halfway through it and it's done a pretty good job. It starts really simple. Um, you have like a little area and you have a little board and really you just have these different types of buildings, three types of zones again. And the first game you just try to surround trees cover up rocks and you just kind of introduce you to the game and then you get wells and they score points and then you putting buildings of the same type together score you points and the cool thing is that they're it's done in chapters and so there you play through three games each one introduces a new concept and the game kind of starts to scale and scale and scale and then whoever wins each game kind of gets these overall points and so there's a winner at the end but it, it's really more about the journey and so the second game is about churches and then the flood um, and there's mines and then, you know, your board's going to start taking up these uh, mountain spaces and you're going to start evolving. Um, and so it's the first, um, it's the first attempt at these, these legacy games. And I'm hoping that there's more because city planning is the perfect place to like build a city and compete for things and kind of have it um, kind of evolve differently. And so I'm halfway into this one. It's really interesting. It's really approachable. Like anybody could sit down. If you've ever loved Tetris when you were a kid or any type of puzzle, Putting together puzzles, this is this is the game for you. So you could just get addicted to kind of arranging it to kind of maximize your points. So um, this is the first introduction to legacy games, and like really, these these probably be a lot more of these city planning legacy games that come out. Um, all right, we're um, we've got just like a minute left, and that actually might be really good um, if you want to just flash it over here. Um, so. Um, just, there's just, there's, there's a really good looking guy on this box. I mean, he has an uncanny resemblance maybe to somebody that you might be looking at right now. This is in fact me. Um, this is, well, this is a picture of me. Um, so our, um, so this in fact is our very own Wade, who's on, he is on the cover there. And in fact, he, he was kind enough to, to sign, <laughs> sign the copy. Um, so this is this is Wade's board game. This actually um, is the most complex of all the games that are that are involved here. It's called Fortune Steel. It's um, based on um, the evolution of Pueblo, like around the um, the early 1900s, and the um, and our friend um, Don Lloyd. He owns a company called Nightworks. He's the one that actually published and produced it. Um, what's really cool about this game is that, um, so it's a city planning game, okay? Um, and what you've got going on here is that um, it's, so there's this, this map of the neighborhoods of Pueblo, and um, there's um, different areas that, that you have. So you kind of start from City Hall, um, from El Pueblo, and there's City Hall that's located here, and then you'll expand um, into the, all of the various areas, um, you know, all the different kinds of neighborhoods. And so there's, there's a, um, a number of different elements that are kind of coming at play. So one of the things that's neat is that um, Wade was was inspired. It's funny too because I'm like I'm, I'm talking about your game, right? <laughs> um, so was um, there there's some some card driven games, and so this this game everything you do is directed by your cards. And so um, Wade did a really nice job of incorporating the history of Pueblo into it. And so you'll have a card. Um, and the card then has some sort of historical um, picture, and, and almost all of these were obtained from the Historical Society, yeah, right down in Pueblo. Yep. And, um, and so then they're also all related to some sort of event or something that's going on around this time period. And what's cool is, is that it, it, um, 
the, you know, so you get a little bit of flavor text that's kind of teaching you a little bit about the time and era of Pueblo. So you've got like this cool historical element. From a gameplay perspective, what's cool is that the card can be used for some generic operations. So this three can be like, you know, I can build some houses or some mines or put some pieces out there on the board. Or you can also use it for then its special ability. And you kind of read this ability and then you say, well, I'm going to use it for then its special ability. And usually it's some, somehow like thematically tied to, you know, the brick sewers here. Um, and, and over time, what's really neat about this game, so it, it takes place, there's three different eras that you, you move through, um, and the city kind of like um, builds up over time and, and kind of evolves. Um, and so um, what's kind of cool is that by the time the game's over, typically there's a bunch of buildings that are all over the game, all over the map. Um, he's got, we've got all these kind of cool wooden pieces. The cubes kind of you know, indicate you're claiming, and then you've got um, little houses. And these uh, hotels, I think, are like mansions that you can that you can build, and um, and commercial buildings that can go out there. Um, that all kind of represent um, you know different elements that were kind of going on in Pueblo at the time. So obviously, there's a big tie. Pueblo, um, you know, has a steel mill, um, and so you know the steel mill, of course, was very integral to Pueblo's development. So and then it kind of ties in the mining element from Colorado, um, you know, from from the you know, nearby towns that were bringing in um, the coal in, in, you know, into the steel mill. So um, this game also does have some, some interesting um, interaction among the players. So it's got a little bit of kind of, I mean, probably this one has probably the most possible mean spiritedness in it <laughs> since there are some, some cards that really enable you to, you know, there's like a flood that will like kind of wipe out some buildings or there's a fire that will or, um, you know, there's a bit of like a mafia element where like there's a riot and they can end up that the rioters can destroy some buildings. And so there's, there's some like kind of destructive elements, probably more destructive than actually is in truly is in public history. Um, but kind of, again, sort of taking a little bit of that artistic license in order to make more of a fun kind of dynamic sort of board game. Um, the sad thing about this one really is, is that um, it actually was really good success and they're aren't any copies anymore, right? So I think it's totally sold out. You have to get in the, you have to get in the black market. <laughs> yes, in the black market. Um, but, um, but it is really neat. And, and obviously, so, um, you know, if, if you want an opportunity to play it, like, wait, obviously, you know, has a copy. And so he's, he's always happy to like, put it out there and teach it and, and play with, with people. And so um, it's just, this is, this is a neat, like kind of, it's a bit more involved kind of immersive sort of experience. Yeah. And I was to Trying to see if we could find like classical revival. There's city, city beautiful um, movement. So like yeah, actual I'll, I'll, I'll planning, um, city beautiful movements in your someplace, um, the Gilded Age, um, Greek immigrants. And so this one I actually try to be as inclusive as possible. Like children is a card. Women's auxiliary societies are a card. All the major immigrant groups have different functions in the game tied to kind of where they interacted with people. So it actually teaches you about history. If you play it enough, it'll teach you about um, city planning elements as well as kind of just even really rudimentary things like sidewalks and kindergartens were were innovations at the turn of the century. We don't even think of those things anymore as innovation. So all those things are in the game and so if you play it enough you'll actually kind of learn about history in the turn of the century as well as how cities were built in the western United States. So this is one I hope to like do some other cities, do Denver, do other cities and tweak some of the mechanics and add different cards and have like the base um, system and kind of um, build up or down based on, on what the town's history is. So it was really fun. <laughs> so I think that's that's it. We tried to respect your time. Um, and I think we have we have way, way more games. We could go all night. <laughs> oh yeah, there's 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 um we have yeah, a couple other ones, but we're gonna try to keep it pretty close to the time limit. Um, and, yeah, and so the thing is is of course there's just I mean, I hope that you get a sense of just there's a variety of different kind of board games that are sort of out there. Obviously, we hit these because they were city planning related, but there's a bunch of like great games also that are out there that they aren't necessarily city planning ones that also are really cool and interesting as well. And so um, it's just been something that Wade and I have become really close as friends. And uh, so we just hope that you enjoyed a little tour of of some, of some planning board games. Yeah, and we've got some time. Sheila wants to be moderator if there's any questions or comments um i have a feeling one of them might be like is there a list of these so i can put together a list tomorrow or this weekend uh, if you want to see if you want to remember what they were and if you want to go out and try to find some of them yeah will you put together a list for me to post on um the 
app and probably the APA website. Yeah. You have, to, you have to twist our arm, right? Yes, exactly. Oh, that's, that's tough. Sure we that's don't want this stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop recording. All right.